All right, fellas, let's head out west where the Los Angeles Lakers held off the Philadelphia 76ers at home 120 to 107 last night. Anthony Davis led the Lakers with 37 points, while LeBron nailed his point forward position with 14 assists to go with 22 points. The Sixers were without Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid, as well as Josh Richardson. Recent acquisition, Glenn Robinson did put up 25 points, but the Sixers just didn't really have the talent on hand to compete. Philly remains in the sixth seed in the East, while the Lakers hold firm at number one out West. All right, Jay, you told us the Clippers are the team to beat out West all season. Did you see anything from the Lakers last night that would have changed your mind? Um, obviously not changing my position that I've held all season. I do think the Clipper, I, I still give the Clippers a slight edge over the Lakers, but I mean, it, it's, it's close and it's, uh, you can make an argument for the Lakers. They got a great shot. Uh, they're definitely, I definitely look at them as the second best team in the West. I think there's a pretty large, there's a pretty significant margin between second and third best out there. Uh, but as for last night, uh, I think it's pretty I think it's pretty easy when you look at the Lakers and Clippers. The advantage the Lakers have is their t- is their second best player has to dominate. And I'm talking about Anthony Davis. And this is what he did last night. I thought Anthony Davis was absolutely spectacular last night and he does it on both ends. His defense was something special. You could make a highlight reel out of def- out of the defensive work he was doing last night. He can do it on the interior. He can switch out and lock you down on the perimeter. It's absolutely outstanding. And then you take into account what he does offensively. I mean, what a performance. Definitely a guy who's in the running for defensive player of the year. And he, he's a, And if he was the lead guy a bit more often, and I, I brought this up earlier in the season, it was my belief that the Lakers would ride Anthony Davis through th- quarters one through three and let LeBron close in the fourth. That's more of what I saw last night. He had 34 of his 37 points in the first three quarters. I don't think we've seen – Enough of that that uh, this season, but I definitely like what I saw last night, albeit against an undermanned 76ers squad. But, I mean, Anthony Davis is so key because when you look at the Clippers and the Lakers, we both know we know both teams have two, have two superstars or stars to superstars. LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard, in my estimation, they're probably going to cancel each other out in a seven game series. I think both of that great. I don't see one or the other having a significant edge. AD has to be significantly better than Paul George because the Clippers depth definitely gives them an edge over the Lakers. But Anthony Davis, if he plays, if he can play like this in a seven game series against the Clippers, that's where they can make up that deficit from the bench. Because as, as good as the Lakers bench is, I mean, when you're coming out there with Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell, I mean, the Lakers just don't. They're not bringing that level firepower off the bench unless unless the hairdo switch from Kyle Kuzma all of a sudden gets him in the high gear. Uh, that remains to be seen, but we'll, we'll see about that. But, but yeah, the, the biggest key for the Lakers this season and in the playoffs, and especially against the Clippers, it's going to be Anthony Davis and – We've, we've seen this from time to time. We saw it against the small ball Rockets. We saw it last night with no Joel Embiid, no Ben Simmons. Anthony Davis is a mismatch in this league of small ball and outside shooting. He can, he can get you 30, an easy 30, every night because there's so many teams, and against the Clippers especially, you're probably going to see a lot of Montrez Harrell on Anthony Davis. And there's just no reason Anthony Davis shouldn't just dominate him. As far as the 76ers, uh, I've been known on this show to be quite hard on them for their lackluster season they've had. I'm not going to do that on this particular occasion, though. There's no reason to give the 76ers grief at this particular juncture. We understand your superstars are not there with Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, and to cap it off, Josh Richardson. He exited the Clippers game with a concussion. So, I mean, they're under, man. You, You can't deny what you're seeing you got two max players in there, but they're, they're max players by, you know, their paychecks only. There's no max contract performances you're getting out of Tobias Harris and Al Horford. But you got to give these guys credit. In the last two games against the Clippers and Lakers, these guys come out. They're playing hard. They took the, they, they took the Clippers all the way down to the wire on Sunday. That was a great game. Uh, Shake Milton poured in 39 points. He was absolutely fantastic. You look at it, Glenn Robinson had a nice game last night. I, I like what you get from Cork Moss. He's definitely a sharp shooter. 
and just as a as a unit, these guys without the stars, they seem to play a whole lot harder. So I give Brett I give Brett Brown credit for having these guys ready and having them competing. But I mean, when I look at what Brett Brown's got, he's got to be in the ear of Simmons and Embiid and like guys. When you get back, you see how hard these these guys who are less talented are playing. We got to see some of that if we're gonna make a run and. I'm going to keep my job because <laughs> Brett Brown's job security is totally reliant about what the 76ers do in this playoffs. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> I want to say that game against the 76ers, let, let's be real here. We're not even going to use that as a barometer right now, but I'll get back to the 76ers here a little later. Here's what I want to talk about. Sunday, 3.30 ABC, that is the game I'm going to use as a barometer. That game They'll be playing the Clippers as the prime time, you know, ABC Sunday, you know, whatever, whatever, shebang, fireworks, boom, 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 boom. Um, <clears throat> but to Jay's point about last night, I do agree with him about most of it. Um, I do beg to differ for a little bit. The, the, the one thing about the Clippers is this. The Clippers 1 through 10 is better than the Lakers 1 through 10. It's no denying that. That's hands down. If you go through the totality – I do think at this time LeBron could bring you a little more on the offensive side than Kawhi, but Kawhi is going to bring you a busload more on the defensive side at this point. So I'm not arguing that. Um, and then when you look at Paul George and Anthony Davis, I definitely think Davis should be able to give you more than what Paul George. But when you, like you said, when you take those four out of the equation, then what you got? Like you can pinpoint a third guy for the Clippers if you want, whether that's Lou Williams. You know, which we, we, we like to say Lou, it, it should be Lou Williams. Or at, you could say Marcus Morris if you wanted to. Like, they have a third guy that you could put in the mix. The Lakers' third guy, I mean, let's be serious. Here. Like Jay said, he's about as consistent as his hair color. We don't know what we're going to get. All right? You, want, he, you know what I'm saying? He want to come out here looking like a, a, a young Frisbee. Then he want to look like a Furby. Then he want to look like – and he's sitting out here talking about they hate me because they ain't me. What? Who wants to be you? Who wants to be you right now? Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you right now, I wish you was Brandon Ingram and Brandon Ingram was you because I said that the Lakers should have kept Brandon Ingram over Kuzma, but they kept Kuzma because he's a team player. He's a, he's a knee slapper. He's a me guy. And then he comes out here and he talked that jazz about LeBron early in the year, talking about how he don't want to play defense. Oh, if you don't say Kuzma, because you're you're just a stopper out there. Man, I ain't seeing people just slide past you. You know, I didn't see Cork Moss just posterize and slide past you the other night. So we, we might want to knock it off, Kuzma. First and foremost, knock it off. With all that said, I want to illustrate the fact that the Lakers never know who the third guy is going to be. Now, if they can get consistent scoring from a third guy, it don't got to be Kuzma. We thought it was going to be Kuzma, but let's say it's Caruso. All right, fine. You know, let's say it's Danny Green, maybe even KCP. One of those guys got to be that third guy that helps LeBron and AD. We see what, what AD can do. When it comes to the Clippers, here's the deal. This is where I differ from what Jay said. I think you let LeBron, do, he can do his thing, sprinkle in his sauce, one through three. I think AD got to be the closer. He has to be the fourth quarter guy. And here's why. That team, the Clippers is built to stop LeBron. Kawhi, Paul George, Marcus Morris. That, that's why those three guys are in the collective dealt for the Clippers. They're there to stop LeBron James. Why do I say that? Because none of them could stop Anthony Davis. You cannot name me a player that's on that roster that's built to stop Anthony Davis. Whatever you can say, you say, oh, well, he, he got the size, but he's too slow. Oh, well, he's too slow, but he got the size. Like, either way, I can tell you how they're not going to beat Anthony Davis. This is why I feel as if, when you make it a Lakers versus Clipper conversation, you have to think, okay, if I give it to AD on the block, he should be, be either A, able to take him to the hole, or B, draw a ball. Oh, by the way, 
he is not a liability at the free throw line. Yes, he could get shaky, but he shoots above 80 percent. You know what I'm saying? That'll get you that'll get you, you know, get the job done most nights. If you put him on the free throw line at crunch time, he can get the job done. Whereas if you do that to LeBron, we have seen the proof is in the pudding. I'm a LeBron James fan, fan. I love the guy, but let me tell you what, you better not put him on the free throw line in crunch time because he ain't gonna get it done. He has shown that time and time again. And I would not, I, I, I love to have the ball in LeBron James because he's still considered a top five player in this league. So why wouldn't you why wouldn't you want the ball in his hand? But I think you got to go through AD in the fourth quarter because he is the matchup problem. Now, last night, hey, <laughs> we had a depleted Clipper squad, so I guess you can do it however you want to do it. You know, you don't have to, you know, follow a, a blueprint when you're playing a team that's depleted. You just, you kind of can go out there. We seen it last night. The first quarter of that game, the Lakers mailed it in. Did you see that performance in the first quarter? They was not interested at all. Even the fans were starting to wonder. And then, me, like uh, me and Jay was talking about before the show, it was that, like, last minute of the second quarter, they said, hey, hey, LeBron, you ready to play some defense? Yeah, AD, you know what's up. What's up? You good, Bradley? Yeah, yeah, we, we about to do this? Yeah, we're going to do this. All right, let's do this. That last minute, if, hey, listen, if you listen to this and you didn't see that last minute, just go to YouTube. Get your, get your clip on, and look at that last minute of the, fir- of the first half. That was a clinic. It was a steal by Bradley, one possession down. Bradley, he throws it to LeBron. LeBron throws it to KCP for an easy dunk. Then the 76ers come back down again. AD gets in the passing lane, steals the ball, takes it. And I don't know who that, that young fella was that tried to stop AD to go to the hole. He didn't even have a chance. Like, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He rests in peace. Like, your your thought process much was all off. You, you was a little discombobulated. Maybe you had your ear drawn, but because I don't know what you was trying to do. Hey, these still go, and he slams on him, right? And then the very the, the third straight possession, they coming down like, oh, we're going to get this shot up before half. And then LeBron, old man Bronny Bron, sends his shot to the nosebleeds. So I'm like, okay, well, hey. The, the Lakers got a little switch to them, I guess. Like, when they feel like it, they can turn it on. And I thought that at that point, you know, pretty much the, uh, the whole third quarter, the Lakers dominated that game. They didn't really, do, you know, put a whole lot of effort into the fourth quarter, but they had such a gap that they could mail it in for majority of the fourth quarter, and they only had to play a small sample size two to three minutes to get the job done in the fourth quarter. So, listen. At the end of the day, it's very hard to answer that question with this 76 team. Maybe if we had a full 76 team, a 76 team that was clicking, even a 76 team that's in Philadelphia, because evidently they're two different teams. If you give me the 76 team that's in Philadelphia playing at the Wells Fargo Center, then I would say, hey, you know what I'm saying? We've seen something that we can go off of. But it's a little hard for me to go, go for that now. Um, I, I was impressed with what I seen with the Lakers, but give me something. Let me see what you do against the Clippers, because now the Clippers are healthy. Like they are healthy now, and they playing some ball. I mean, they ran the Nuggets out of the gym the other night, and you know what I mean. And the Nuggets is a team we had respect for before the season. Um, one at least a team we we consider a playoff team if nothing else. So and they ran them out the gym. It wasn't even mile, yeah, yeah, the Mile High City. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it was. So they was out of there. Um. So uh, let's see what they do against the other team uh, in L.A. on Sunday. And then, uh, you know, I'll reserve my opinion for that then. Oh, man, the one-liners always get me. I love them. Yeah, man, overall, I think this would have been really embarrassing if the Lakers would have managed to lose this game, especially the lack of days of the way they started. You're talking about a Philly, you know, a team without three of their four best players and a team that hasn't won on the road since January 20th. That would have uh, that would have not looked good, but they obviously were able to get it done. You know, I was, I was a little surprised. I, mean, I guess – a little surprised at how dominant Anthony Davis was for most of that game. I just, I guess I always think of Philly as one of these bigger teams that has more of a chance to guard a guy like Davis. But again, missing Embiid uh, really takes away a lot of your defensive uh, efforts. Um, You know, you would kind of hope that without some of your main scoring options, you would be able to, kind of collapse more on defense and try to play a little more defense. But I mean, AD at the end of the day was just, 
he was the AD we know that we, he can be. And when he is, man, man, good luck. Um, but, you know, for Philly overall, I think you got to like what you saw from Glenn Robinson. I think it's a guy, you know, you traded for him as a 3 and D sort of guy. And he finally got some threes going. And getting towards playoff time, a guy like him could really help out. You know, when you're talking about the 76ers who, if they're healthy, should be just as competitive as most teams in the Eastern Conference, Sands, maybe Milwaukee at this point. Um, you're, they should compete with your Torontos and with your Bostons and with your Miamis. And a guy like him could be a little bit of a difference maker they might need uh, if they're going to rise to the expectations we all have for them at this point. Um, you also figured out that Tobias Harris, something we already knew, isn't going to be a primary scoring option. Um, if you want a fun little side note, go look up his career stats versus his stats this year. He's playing literally at his career levels to like almost a percentage point. It's it's pretty amusing. Um, sort of bad minimum. Yeah, it's it's doing just what you get out of him and nothing more. Okay. Um, treading water. Al Horford did have a good game, and that's a guy that, man, it looks like Al Horford is just on the decline. I don't know if his age is, is starting to finally catch him or whatever the case is, or he's just not being utilized as well. But, you know, eight points last night, two of eight shooting. Uh, just, uh, I don't know, man. I, I hate to see that for him, but hey, he wanted to go to Philly, so you know, good luck to him. But overall, hey, not the, you know, it's still troubling this team can't find ways to win on the road. Um, you Obviously, you give him a pass on this one. Five of the next six games are at home in the Eastern Conference. So, you know, we're going to see if they're going to be able to sneak back into that four seed. But as we just mentioned, Miami is going to be coming hot on their heels. So we'll see. And, yeah, for Los Angeles, y'all y'all pretty much covered it top to bottom. This is what you want to see from the Lakers. You want to see LeBron, you know, masterfully playing that point forward look he's got going on. I don't think people really appreciate or understand sometimes what they're seeing with that. A guy that at his age and advanced time in the league, he's completely sort of reinvented his game. I mean, it's it's mind boggling when you really kind of think about it. He's smoking the league in assists, smoking everyone else. It, it's not a horse race. Like he's gonna walk away with the assist title. Um, and this isn't just you know like oh, uh, you know aging scores a little older now he's gonna pass some more. Like no, nah, we're talking like a complete renovation of the game and how the whole offense runs. It, it's it's just amazing and worth worth pointing out. Um, but yeah, you know. Bradley played a little better, a lot better on defense. You know, last time we talked about him, I kind of pointed him out as a guy. And, you know, like you said, Drink, hey, it's a little more. He does more than just score. And we kind of saw that last night somewhat. Uh, Kuzma is still obviously an issue, still a guy you're not getting to figure out where his place is in this offense. And that's something they're going to have to address, I think, to get over the Clippers uh, because they're going to need the depth that he provides. And they just haven't figured it out yet. But there's something there, man. I just, I think they just got to. They got to continue to experiment, rotating them in different times to different players. They got to figure that out because they don't. That's going to be a big problem come playoff time. But overall, yeah, I think the Lakers did what they wanted to do, and the Sixers just had yeah, other guys. Yeah, the Lakers. Yeah, the Lakers. They absolutely they won't win the title without a third score. And look, they they didn't add another playmaker, so it's it's got to be Rondo. Rondo's got to be the guy to come off the bench, spell LeBron at the playmaking role. Maybe let him play off ball a little bit. I know you like Caruso, and Caruso Caruso still deserves minutes, but he's not the playmaker. He's not going to run the team like Rondo does. So that's why I still think Rondo is a key on this team. 